Okay, for the purpose of clearing up a lot of questions that people have kind of bombarded me with over the last six months or so since Eric Olson um, was terminated by WFG and subsequently formed GFI or Global Financial Impact, I've had so many questions and so many inquiries from people about, well, what about this, what about that? So I thought I would give you some inside information on GFI and Eric Olson, who I've known for decades, okay? A couple of decades at least. And so take this uh, the way you want to, use it any way you want, but I certainly do have inside information on this leader and this company that him and his wife, Sandra, have created, and, and, and I'll make this brief. <clears throat> Here's a thing about Eric Olson, okay? This is the inside scoop, and this comes with after 40 years of interviewing self-made millionaires all over the world. I can't believe I'm that old, but I am, and I've been doing it since 1984, and I have an expertise just because I've interviewed so many of these people over the years in the mindset, in the psychology of these super ambitious people, of which Eric Olson is one. And you know, these are, I've interviewed three, over 300 billionaires. These are all personal one-on-one -on -one interviews. These are not on the phone. These are not, there was no internet back then or anything like that. These are all one-on-one -on -one interviews. And I've interviewed Eric Olson several times as well and gotten to know his mindset. And he's, his mindset is like a lot of the top people that I interviewed, the most ambitious people. In other words, a, a psychological scale of ambition, if you take a test with a psychologist or a psychiatrist, will tell you, a lot of them will say, scale of one to seven, that's the psych psychological uh, test. Scale of one to seven, seven being most, how ambitious are you? These people are a seven out of a seven. You know, most people are about a three and a half or a four. Millionaires are typically a five. Billionaires are typically a seven, okay? I mean, they are the among the most ambitious people, if not the most ambitious people in the world. And that's why they create these fortunes. I put Eric Olson in that category. Uh, this is not a compliment to Eric. Um, uh, it's, a, it's just a fact based on 40 years of, of learning to assess this 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 mindset and, I'll, and here's the real inside scoop on eric okay honestly and i don't think you're going to hear this well i don't know if you'll hear it from other people or not i'm not really sure i won't even say that but here here's what i've i've deducted over the time of knowing him the reason i've always promoted eric as a leader is because some of the most ambitious people in the world do it for money. They do it for fame. They do it for recognition. That's why they want to achieve what they have to achieve. A lot of times these people are ignored by their parents or their family or their kids or their, you know, I mean, their, their siblings or, you know, their teachers or coaches or clergy or whatever. They have some kind of deficit that they're attempting to fill with success. And so it's, so success, therefore, is a means to an end. With guys like Eric Olson, it's the means that excites him. It's not the end. It, a lot of people will say, because Eric said so many times on stages, he'll say, oh, I want to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. But when you really get to know Eric Olson, I will tell you in no uncertain terms, that's not what drives this guy. It drives a lot of people. I've interviewed a lot of those people, uh, some very famous people, okay? And a lot of people that weren't famous, they were just really rich. And they did it for the money. They did it for the recognition. They did it for the fame and all those things. That is not Eric Olson. He's among the most dangerous of all performers. When I say dangerous, I mean dangerous in a good way, not in a, in a bad way. Dangerous in the context of he's going to fight the fight because, not because he wants to be richer, He's going to fight the fight because he loves the fight. I hope that makes sense. You know, like I'll give you an example. When I was in college, I, I got into the Kappa Sigma fraternity. You have big brothers. You know, you have a big brother when you're new in a fraternity, if you're familiar with the Greek system. And we got, we were in this bar in Mobile, Alabama, and these local tough guys were kind of picking on us a little bit. And, you know, I was young and stupid and I had a, you know, a pretty good schooling in martial arts and thought I was kind of tough and, and, you know, large and all that. And so I told my fraternity brothers, I said, hey, let's just take these guys out, you know, and, and, uh, and teach them a lesson, which is really stupid. I get it. But, you know, I was young. And, uh, and my fraternity brother said, who was local to Mobile, he said, Steve, you don't understand. 
These guys aren't picking on us because they're mad at us. They're picking on us because they love to fight. It's, it, they're not mad at us. They're not jealous of us. They want to fight because that's what they do. They love it. There are people that just love to fight. It's not an end. It's, a, it's the means. that they, they love the process. You know, Jimmy Connors was like that in tennis. I swear he loved to fight the fight as a tennis player more than he loved to win. And he loved to win. Eric Olson loves to win. I, I know this is my assessment, take it or leave it, but, but I think it comes with some authority just because I spent my whole life studying these people. And, and he's one of the people I've studied. And he loves the battle. He wants to do this. When I interviewed him about GFI, he, he, it wasn't really a formal interview. We were talking on the phone when he first, you know, was deciding to, to pursue GFI with Sandra. And, you know, I said, how much money can you spend, Eric? You know, and he said, I don't care about the money. I want to do it. I said, so when you build this into the biggest company in financial services history, which I believe he will do, you know, some people are criticizing me for saying that 40 years. I've, I've haven't seen anyone in financial services, including Art Williams, who can hold a candle to this guy's ambition. Not because he wants to be rich, because he loves the fight. So I said to Eric, half knowing the answer, what he was going to say, I wasn't sure. I said, why are you doing all this? How many yachts can you water ski behind? How many islands can you buy? How many $40 million houses can you build? He said, Steve, I don't care about that. I said, so when you build the biggest financial services company, what will you do then? Sell it off like Patrick Pet David did? And he said, no. And I said, what do you do? He goes, we'll build it even bigger. I love to play the game. It's not the money. He said, I've been rich since I've been in my 20s. It's not about being rich. I'm already rich. He said, I want to build the best, the biggest, the fastest financial service, and we're just going to build it even bigger and help more families. And I hung up the phone and I told my wife, Dawn, I said, that's it. It's over. This guy just decided he was going to be the biggest guy in the history of this business. And he's going to do it not because of the, the end result. He's going to do it because he loves the fight. You can't beat someone who loves the fight. There's just almost no way. The only way anyone would have a chance against someone like that would be if they were of the same mentality. I've been a vendor of this industry for 25 years. I've seen Patrick Bed Davids. I've seen, you know, I won't name a, you know, tons of people, but I've seen a lot of people. And, I, and I, by the way, I'm a fan of Patrick Bed David. I've known him for 100 years uh, when he was broke and young and all the rest of it. You know, and he's done a great job. And a lot of these guys have done a great job. I've never seen anyone like Eric Colson because of this reason, because he's fighting for the fight. He's not going to sell it off. He's going to build the biggest business and then he's going he's gonna to stay with it. I guarantee it. This is a guy who wants the fight. He wants the means, not the end. That's the inside information on Eric Olson. And if I was 10 years younger or 20 years younger and I needed the money or I was still building my fortune, um, I'd be in business with Eric Olson. There's no question about it. I guarantee it. Because he's the right leader at the right time with the right platform, with the right mentality. Right? Is it a perfect company? No, none of these companies are perfect. Either is Johnson & Johnson, by the way, you know, to whom I was a consultant for you know, 10 years. Okay? Either I could name off lots of companies. Even the biggest companies in the world aren't perfect. It's not the company you want to follow, ever. It's the leadership. That's what makes the company. That is the company, especially if you're an associate. It's the leader. This guy came to play, and ain't no one going to beat him. That's my opinion. Take it or leave it, but I've had so many people ask me about this that I, I just felt like I had to respond and, and give you the inside information, at least as I've, as, as, I've, as I've deducted it with my experience. And inside information on GFI is they're, they're doing cutting edge things, okay? Um, they're doing cutting edge things. They're leveraging technology. They got very, in my opinion, very wisely, they got out of the securities business, okay? And I won't even go into why that, I think that's really smart, but I think that was brilliant of Eric and Greg Cap um, to get out of securities and focus on insurance for lots of reasons. And they're, and they're doing it you know, using technology and they're also going international, which has never really been done before in this industry. So these guys are on fire, unbelievable. I, I, am not, I don't get any pay from the company. I'm not connected at all. I'm just a fan of Eric Olson. I'm a fan of GFI now, a fan of Greg Cap and the other leaders, you know, Paul Hart and, and uh, some of the other leaders in there, Tavares Dove and some of the guys that, that I've known over the 
years in, in this industry. I'm just a fan. I don't get paid anything, so you don't have to worry about me. It's not a commercial or anything like that. It's just a response to a lot of people that have read my books over the years because I've spoken to a lot of these groups and uh, you know on these teams, and so they know who I am and they know I'm connected to the company. I wrote a book on World Financial Group, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the only reason I'm doing this. I don't think I, it's not a commercial for those guys, but um, but that's the inside scoop. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna make history. They're already cranking, which is no surprise to me from from the beginning of the year. And I think once they settle everything up, um, you know, legally and everything, that they're going to go even faster. So I'm predicting they're going to be the biggest, which I did from the time Eric called me when he had the idea for GFI um, to move forward. I figured they would be the biggest company because of the leadership. Without Eric, it's just a company. Okay, Greg Cap also brings a ton of experience, a lifetime of experience and integrity and credibility to the equation. So I don't want to minimize Greg Cap's role in this in this process either, because he is a major asset to the company, which is of course why Eric brought him in. And there are other people as well that that you know are really help. But you know, again, without Eric Olson, it's just a company. But with him, <clears throat> he's going to make history. That's my opinion. Take it or leave it. But I just wanted to respond to you guys who were interested. Thanks.